Hello and welcome to this uh, quick review about 3ds Max 2016. I am Luca De Ryu from Places and I just installed the software and uh, well I feel like a kid uh, who just received a new toy. I can't wait to see what is uh, inside the box. So here I started 3ds Max uh, and I have the um, typical welcome screen here in front. I noticed this new startup template where I can decide to use uh, some new template like original. Uh, sample architectural uh, outdoor with HDRI courtyard and sample uh, studio scene. So it's quite cool because I think he takes the file and the data from some sample installed uh, with the software. Also, I can move uh, in the learn part and also here nothing new. I can decide to see some startup video where I can have some new idea and understand how the software works and let me invite you on renderacademy.com if you want to see also other video tutorial and some courses. Also I can extend the functionality of 3ds Max downloaded from Autodex Exchange or Autodex 360 some content. Also it's quite cool to find here script spot link where I can click and go and download some script, uh, very useful script and participate in the community of the development for them. So let's see what is inside the software. Uh, welcome for both of us inside 3ds Max 2016. The user interface is dark and I like this one so it's not like the previous version where I had uh, every time to change from customize. Uh, the user interface, let me check the unit setup uh, because I prefer to use this in centimeter and also here I prefer to work in centimeter. So before I forget I uh, install it and I don't have to think about it anymore. The user interface has new icons here, especially in this right part here of the user interface. Here I have the ribbon. Generally I don't use this uh, ribbon so I suggest to keep it closed so I can use that part of the user interface. Here on the right I have all the tools necessary and the ribbon is just for few tools. Here on the left uh, I have the scene explorer. Also this I prefer not to dock it on the left part of the user interface but I prefer to open it uh, you know on demand when I need it. Also um, I don't use so much the scene explorer I prefer to press H to open the select uh, from scene select by name nothing new from inside 3ds Max so you can open it from here. What I like of the scene explorer is that if I have a plane and a teapot well I mean if I have some object yeah, this is cool. Uh, if I pass with the mouse over the object, I can have a preview of what I'm going to select. And if I select them, they have this uh, glowing color. So yeah, I don't have anymore the, this overlay of the wireframe overlaying on the selected object. Uh, uh, previously, uh, it was like this before 3ds Max 2015. And if I want to see the wireframe, I press F3. If I want to see the overlay on the selected object, I press F4. So it's perfect. But the way I was telling you about this tool, I like that I can create hierarchy very quickly. So if I want the teapot to be a child of the plane, if I want the plane to be the parent, I simply click, drag and drop over the plane. And now whatever happens to the plane is applied to the teapot. This is quite cool. And if I want to interrupt the hierarchy, I just drag and drop and this is done. By the way, I was telling you not to keep this docked, but you can use it like this. So I heard a lot of stories and a lot of rumors about this 3ds Max 2016. I heard that there is a new modifier named Turbo Smooth uh, um, Optimized Turbo Smooth Progressive uh, Open Turbo Smooth. And it's here, Open Subdiv. So with this I can have the same benefit that I had with the Turbo Smooth, but this time I can have the GPU display that is displaying with the GPU so I can uh, somehow remove the polygon from the CPU and from the rendering but I'm rendering them in the GPU so I need a proper GPU you know for rendering and I have this new adaptive mode that is uh, subdividing my object according to the distance uh, um, from the camera from the viewport yeah okay so now I can use this adaptive I want to remove this isoline display that is making a little bit of confusion. And you see, when I am far away from the object, I don't have so many polygons. I have the minimum uh, necessary of the object, so it's not optimized. And when I get closer, I can see more polygons. So I suppose if I increase here the subdivision, yeah, it's very cool. You see, here I have a certain amount of polygon, and when I get closer, I have more, and so the object is smoother. So this is very cool, and I will give a look later on these uh, tools. 
What attracts me from this uh, 3ds Max release should be here inside the camera and I had just standard here it is physical camera so I can drag and drop and I have this new icon for the cameras so I can watch from this camera my object and uh, the camera is displayed is drawn differently because previously we had the target with a different of course icon and uh, especially different options inside now with this camera we can uh, affect uh, the deep of field and we can see the deep of field directly here on the camera so if i change the aperture the aperture is connected with the uh, aperture of the diaphragm so it will change the uh, amount of depth that i can see in my scene i can change this preview area also i can change the focal length that is connected with the preview so i can affect my deep of field using this uh, two parameter and uh, i should be able to change the exposure control and exposure control installed probably because i remember if you press 8 on the keyboard or if you select rendering environment you can define from this drop down list the exposure control and previously we were working with this mental ray photographic exposure control both for mental ray and eye ray and here we could define the shutter speed aperture f-stop and film speed and this was very cool method to define the exposure with a photographic uh, parameter you know not just with the intensity of the light to define how much light we got inside the scene the main problem of this uh, method was that every single camera inside our scene was affected by the same exposure so if we had for example five cameras both for these five camera we had the same amount of brightness with the same amount of light of course but now um, where is it i need to press on this install exposure control yeah that is changing this uh, camera exposure control and i can define with this ev my brightness inside the scene so let me quickly create one light and i think in the light there is nothing new so i create a photometric light i want to have a rectangular light and i make it closer i work with candles i just want to have uniform diffuse and i start a render i suppose it's mental ray yeah it's mental ray by default so the first time you render you have mental ray selected and not iray or other renderer or scan line and this is my result but if i select the camera that i have in use and i change this exposure value for example with 10 the scene should look darker ah, sorry the scene should look darker and yes in fact indeed it's darker because uh, my camera is filtering the exposure so if i want brighter or darker i can use the exposure value as well as the intensity of the light but this is obvious what is not obvious is that we can use this one also we have a shutter here i notice connected with a motion blur so if we have moving object or animation we can have the natural uh, blurness of the object that are moving um, using here for example i can have one divided 200 of second i just curious to see uh, let me change this uh, f number and this shutter speed i i expect it to get uh, brighter yeah but it's not so it means that they are connected just with a specific like depot field and uh, um, motion blur so they are not connected with the exposure value if you want to change the brightness of your camera you have just to change this and you change the exposure of the camera here where we have lens distortion so i can decide to distort my view i have perspective control so i can have this uh, uh, vertical correction and this is quite cool if you are using um, you know grand angular lenses and you have the tilt uh, in your camera and we have the lens shift so if if we want to prevent we can use also the shifting of the camera it's very expensive when we buy them uh, physically on our camera and here is absolutely uh, for free because it's uh, inside this virtual and digital um, environment so enough speaking about the camera i want to see another story uh, connected with the two cameras because if i have two cameras in my scene i can open here from the rendering this new camera sequencer that gives me the possibility to see one camera and then the other yeah it's very cool so if i have more cameras inside my scene i can affect the position of one camera i can affect the position of the other camera and i can work 
as a movie director, you know, I can see the, the, um, the passage between one camera and the other. And because I have different exposure parameter, uh, this can be very useful. So I think this is very good move uh, from Autodesk. I think this will be very cool and I will use in production for something. When I open here the rendering, I notice here on the top this new render, render in Autodesk A360. What is this? It opens this uh, window, target, cloud rendering, production rendering mode. Ah, okay. So here, this is the render setup page where I can decide uh, if I want to render production, iterative, and active shade. So previously it was here on the bottom right of this uh, view. And now I can also select my render here before starting the, the render. And this makes sense. So it's not anymore at the bottom of the of this um, viewport, but it's on the top. And it makes sense. It's quite useful. And here I think this will be populated with all the third-party plugin that we may buy and install. And the new part here is the A360 cloud rendering that gives me possibility to test my scene. Please select a camera to render. Um, here, I can select the camera that I want to use to render and here is checking. He said no material on geometry. Of course, I forgot to apply material. So let me just create a material editor so I can expect also this new viewport where nothing looks new. Here the preview looks broken, it's not refreshing. By the way, now I applied the material, so tell me something new. Yeah, zero warning and zero error. So it means the scene is uh, promoted and I can upload it online and use my credit to render um, with another computer that is much faster than mine. Or uh, Also mine can be quite fast, but if I'm working on a big production, I can uh, somehow outsource the render and just the render process. So uh, probably Autodesk has some computer somewhere that receive my scene, open the scene, render everything, and then send it back to me uh, by email when the render is complete. I think this is amazing because I can work on something else when I am rendering. And while I was discussing about this, we saw also here the production render. Let me check inside uh, Mental Ray if something is new, but I read online that they improved, uh, uh, well, it's not clear what they improved. They say that they align with a new version of uh, Mental Ray and iRay. I remind you that Mental Ray and iRay, they are property of NVIDIA and they are uh, both. Uh, there is this kind of partnership. They are embedded inside the software. So I think it's quite obvious if NVIDIA updates the Mental Ray and iRay with the latest technology, of course, they up, uh, upgrade this. So I think nothing uh, so special happen here inside or we'll see in future. Um, if you found something special or if I uh, did some mistake or I forgot something, uh, you are free to comment under this video. Uh, I invite you to comment something in, under this video so we can discuss about what you think about these new features. And about the rendering here, light analysis, video post, well, nothing else should uh, new. So the last part that I want to see that I read uh, online is the visual scripting tool. So as you know, uh, inside 3ds Max, we can develop with this language name MaxScript. We can use the MaxScript to, to type our code. Then they added the visual MaxScript editor. It's something like Visual Studio, you know, where you can construct your user interface with button, rollout, and some something. But the functionality still are uh, passed on the MaxScript tool. In this new version, they added this uh, Max Creation Graph. So I can open. And on the left, we have the notes. Okay, so on the left we have the ingredient and here we have the main canvas. So I can select one ingredient, I need to open, and I can select here, for example, the field of view. And here, the, here I have the parameter. I can have colors, so the blue, the green, the gray, control flow, constant. I can have false, so I can have something Boolean. And here I can program my script, my tool, and I can distribute with the community. I think also it can be sold online. Uh, now I'm quite unprepared on this Max Creation Graph uh, uh, monetization. You know, I'm, I still don't know how you can uh, uh, 
uh, monetize it uh, and for sure you can share with friend because at certain point you can save as uh, or package max creation graph and here you can distribute uh, and somebody else can install it so this will simplify the creation of something procedural and it will be very useful for who works with motion graphic and I think with in this way author, Autodesk want to take some uh, um, amount of uh, user that migrated in other software specifically developed for uh, motion graphic and if you are a 3d um, artist you know which software i'm talking about i don't want to mention them i'm not here to make a promotion for other stuff and i think this max creation graph will be very useful for video game development uh, by time to time i'm also uh, involved in video game development and i'm not new to this uh, Mm, visual uh, uh, scripting and visual coding and I think this part will be very very cool uh, so I can't wait to stop this video and to start working here inside and uh, yeah well I'm sorry but I have to to start managing here inside so I think this is enough for this uh, Autodesk 3ds Max 2016 new release uh, and I invite you to write some comment here and let's continue the discussion uh, under this video thank you for watching